Hi everyone, today let's talk about the AI chip restrictions, as well as FedPal's comments, then we'll look at Max Payne, then we'll get into the charts, then we'll look at my results for the day and my thoughts going into tomorrow's session. If you like trading stocks and options and making money, definitely like and subscribe. I make videos like this every single day that the markets are open as well as Sundays, so make sure you hit the bell so you don't miss out on any future episodes. Welcome to the Portfolio Bulletin. Let's get started. So NVIDIA and AMD stock fell after hours yesterday because of a potential restriction of AI chips going to China. The U.S. wants to maintain its lead in AI, and we think it could be a significant advantage to the United States to have access to those AI chips which does seem reasonable, but of course that's going to drop their sales at least a little bit. They say if the democratic side is not in the lead of technology, then the authoritarians will take the lead. And again, this is going to affect the bottom line of companies that are making money on facilitating AI, which is primarily those chip makers focused on NVIDIA and AMD. And moving over to Jerome Powell's comments this morning, he talked about more hikes coming in potentially consecutive meetings. Most people think we're going to get a hike in July, and we'll look at those Fed futures later, but it's pretty likely we're going to get a hike in July. And if he's saying at back-to-back -back meetings, that would mean we get a hike in July and then in August, and then we would be at the terminal rate that they put out at the last meeting. Pretty interesting. He continues to be hawkish here, saying that more restrictions are coming, no hikes are coming, and that nothing is off the table. Of course, this hit the markets a little bit in a pretty choppy trading session. Again, we'll highlight that on the charts, but he was definitely not dovish in any way in his comments today. Moving over to the economic calendar, not much besides Powell talking. Seven-year note auction came in pretty much at the previous read, which is interesting. That means we're going to get some cuts between five and seven years. That brings us back down to this level. And then looking at tomorrow, we have Fed Powell speaking very early in the morning. We also have GDP numbers at 8.30. Definitely interesting. Pretty significant step down from the last read. We also have jobless claims, which continue to step up slightly over time. I'll be watching that one closely again at 8.30. And then pending home sales. The last numbers for home sales were quite a bit of a blowout. And I would expect to see that again here at the 10 o'clock numbers. Moving over to Fed futures, you can see we stepped up to almost 82% chance of a hike in July. Moving to September, we're still looking at a pause if we get the hike in July. And then looking all the way out to January, the highest probability is back to current levels. So a little bit of disconnect between the market and the Fed. If we get the two hikes like they talked about and reach that terminal rate, that means we would need to get two cuts before January of next year, which does seem pretty unlikely. Moving over to Max Payne, still at 434. We did go up a little bit today, 436, almost 437. Highest put strike, still 430. I still think that's going to be the low of the week. I don't think we'll close below that level. It does seem like we're starting to get towards the top of those puts for the end of the week, which could mean a 440 close up around 442 or so maybe. Do start to have some calls in here, which would make a little bit of money if we went any higher than that. But 442 does seem like the high for this week. Put call ratio went all the way up to three here. So tons and tons of puts in the market. Options almost at 2.5 million, which is a pretty big week for a week that is not the third week OPEC. So lots of options in the market, 430 for the low, and I would guess 442 for the upside here on the SPY. Moving over to the charts, starting with the SPY here on the hour and the four hour, looking like a cup and handle here, looks pretty nice. Going up after hours, I would expect this to rally pretty aggressively up to 438. Remember, 442 would be the level I'm watching for the end of week highs. That would be up at the high from 16 June. Before we had that bigger pullback, it does seem like we're going to see an acceleration into those previous highs at this point. Everything looks good for that rally to continue. We're back above all the EMAs and SMAs here on the hourly chart as well as the 12 hour everything looks good definitely some levels of resistance to watch in here but momentum moving back towards bullish volume picked up here today everything looks good for more bullish price action tomorrow Moving over to the cues here on the hour and the four hour, you can see it did throw a big wick through my level. 
at 364.84, rejected, got back down to the 200, chopped in this zone, and then rallied into the close. Again, still looks bullish. We're above all the EMAs and SMAs on the hourly chart, but I did get whipsawed a little bit on that early morning move, which is why I didn't make any money here today, which is unfortunate. Markets were up a little bit, but I was not. Four-hour chart doesn't look as strong, still above the level, still above all the EMAs and SMAs. Next resistance up at 369, horizontal resistance at 372.25. Moving over to the Russell and the Dow, Russell looks clean, back above this level cleanly. Looking at the 55 EMA here on the four-hour chart, 184.70 if that level breaks here tomorrow. Should see a pretty significant push up to 186.70. That would be nice. Dow rejected from that key level, 339.11. Want to see it get back above there before you start to turn more bullish. Highly traded zone up here at 339.45. So definitely some interesting price action here. Still holding trend support. You want to see that rally. Get a clean break of 339.11 and then that 55 EMA. And if both of those happen, then we should see a nice move up to 343.23. Moving over to Apple and Tesla, not much to say here on Apple, continues to grind higher, absolutely crushing it. Tesla, big push in the morning, kind of sold off into the end of day. Looking at that 55 EMA to hold 254.67. You're also at a pretty highly traded zone here at 257. You really want to see a hold of that 55 EMA here on the four hour chart and then a rally back up to that horizontal resistance, 264.68. Then if you can get up and hold that level, then we're looking up to the previous high at 278.40. Moving over to Netflix and Google. Netflix came into trend support, rallied aggressively off of that level, looks pretty clean, momentum and RSI both bullish, back above all the EMAs and SMAs and VWAP, everything looks good, up to 455.91 from current prices, definitely will have some resistance at the previous high, 446.23 or so, but does look good here. Alphabet, also coming strongly off of that 200 SMA. We're in an area of resistance, watching that highly traded zone, 123.25, as well as the 55 EMA in here. But this looks nice. So you have a solid double tap of that 200 SMA, slightly higher low setup, looks clean going back into these previous highs, up around 126. Moving over to staples and discretionary, it looks like my thesis broke down here. I was really expecting the 55 EMA to hold, and it looks like we got below that here on a closing basis on the four hour chart. I wanted to see that hold and then we get a type of continuation up to 75.40, but we're back below 74. Looks like we're below the 55 here and that looks more weak than it did yesterday. MACD moving lower, RSI also bearish, discretionary right at these previous highs at the close. We did throw a wick to a new recent high, but we didn't close above it and it doesn't look quite like a breakout yet. Momentum, bullish, RSI, still bullish. So certainly could get a push up to this next trend resistance at 171. And then I have horizontal resistance here at 174.76. Moving over to transports, slightly grinding day, but it is a new high. Looking at this weekly chart, you can see that big push above this resistance line. We're right at the highs from 30 January. We're testing the closure highs here from 8 August of last year. We're above this trend line, and if we start to hold and we start to go higher here, you could see transports pushing back up to these previous highs. That would be interesting. You can see we're also testing this midpoint here from August of 21, and everything looks pretty good here on transports to go higher. Moving over to breadth on the 50 and 200 day averages, got a little bit of a cool off. We got below 62.25 here on the 50. Does look like a lower high starting to set up. That's interesting. Similarly here on the 200 day average, we're right at the 9 EMA, back below 58.90. If we get a rally tomorrow, I would expect this to get back above those two levels and start to push up to the next resistance, looking like a much higher low versus this previous low that we're coming off of. You can see that on both charts, holding that 21 EMA looking for a bigger push up might just be a little bit of a stall at these levels and then a continuation tomorrow if we don't get a push tomorrow however this is starting to look like a lower high setup and then you might want to look for a little bit of a push down even if we get a rally tomorrow it might have weaker breadth 
Moving over to the two and 10 year yields, you can see two years starting to stall out a little bit. We've been grinding up for quite a while. This rally goes all the way back to 12 May, going straight up for that whole time. Little pullbacks here and there, but it does seem to be rolling over at least a little bit now. Similarly here on the 10 year, starting to cool off a little bit. Kind of interesting. 10 year has been pretty sideways throughout this period. The two year has been very aggressive and it does seem to be cooling here now. Moving over to the dollar, we got a huge push here today based on his comments. We're still stuck below 102.98, but if we get above that level and we start to push up to this previous horizontal resistance at 103.64, that could be quite bearish for equities. We're still in a kind of sideways consolidation below the 21 EMA, below the 144 EMA here on the daily chart. Tag that level to the penny, and we're still holding at that level. Momentum still looking to move more bullish. This looks more bullish on the shorter time frames as well. So keeping an eye on the dollar as we move into tomorrow's session and like i said we have fed Powell talking overnight and he might say some more hawkish things which would drive the dollar higher and potentially push equities lower moving over to jnk and tlt jnk absolutely a rocket ship here today i still want to see this get above 92.50 that would be a nice confirmation for me higher low set up looking for that higher high up above 92.50. We did get a gap down after hours, which is probably just a demand gap, looking for this to rally into tomorrow's session, at least eclipse 92.15. That's predicting a pretty strong rally in equities tomorrow, in my opinion. TLT still grinding at resistance, 103.70 through another wick through that level, seems to be cooling off and losing momentum. Again, not much to say on TLT, just a hold in this zone. Moving over to the volatility indices, move index selling off back below the 9 EMA. Makes sense. We saw bonds going a little bit higher, yields coming down. Looking at the VIX, selling back off, back below the, all the EMAs and SMAs. We do have a higher RSI read, which is interesting. If this establishes a slightly higher low, that could be a potential setup here. But right now, selling off, momentum, bearish, RSI, bearish. Again, looking for equities to go higher tomorrow. Moving over to my accounts, you can see I lost a little bit of money, not too much, but definitely more than I should have on a market that was down a little bit. You can see I still have quite a bit of red on the Q's position at 364.54. That's actually up about a dollar here after hours. We'll see if that holds. And then I have a 365 call for a dollar 89. So looking at a potential for about $450 between this position, if we get a max profit, that would be quite nice. Looking at the IWM, I have two puts here at 182, one in my IRA and one in my individual account. I expect the IWM to continue to perform well here. And you can see all of that is in a profit going into tomorrow's session as well. I might even look to put a covered call position here on the IWM. We'll see how that plays out. Really, I should have been a little bit more bullish going into tomorrow's session, I think. Looked pretty clean. We got above some levels and all the charts look like we're set to go higher tomorrow. Let me know down in the comment section what you think of the AI chip restrictions or Jerome Powell's comments. Is he just going to continue to hike to 6 or 7% or something crazy like that? Or what is going to break first? Definitely like and subscribe if you got any value out of this video and make sure you hit the bell so you don't miss out on any future episodes. Of course, none of this is financial advice. This is all for entertainment purposes. Good luck in your trading and have a great day.